Hello and welcome to all you beautiful Messians. I'm Claudette Hasenjager and today's theme is adventure. Most of you are going into spring, warmer weather and you are starting to see all these beautiful flowers blossoming and sticking their little heads up everywhere. Unfortunately, some of us are busy saying goodbye to summer and we are starting to really feel like we need to appreciate the very last of the flowers that we are seeing around us. Wherever you fall in this beautiful world, this is definitely going to be something you want to be taking advantage of. So when I had started thinking about adventure, of course, the first thing that came to mind was getting outside and doing something that involves the environment around you. And that is when I decided that the best way for us to take advantage of either saying goodbye to our blooms or welcome to new life would be to do some bundle dyeing. And of course, because we're in the season of mess, this just seems perfect. With bundle dyeing, we are going to be collecting flowers and leaves and any kind of little blossoms that we can find around us. So I'm going to definitely be encouraging you to get out there, go for a walk, pick some flowers along the way, any kind of florals. If though you don't have time to go for a walk in nature today, I would definitely encourage you to pop past the grocery store and get yourself a bunch of flowers to use for this process. The other things that you're going to need are a spray bottle with some water and vinegar. I just sort of use a half and half solution and then some plastic sheet so to make that easier for myself I've used some plastic sleeves obviously you'll need some fabric I've used calico because that is a more natural kind of fabric and then to tie these bundles up you could either use some kind of bandage in that case you're going to need some safety pins too or twine whichever you've got lying around. When it comes to creating the bundle, you can either just bundle the fabric up and then tie it, or you could find some kind of pipe. So this was around PVC pipe once, but it's gotten a little dented. It doesn't bother me. I'm just using this to roll my fabric up on. You could also use a wooden dowel or something like that. And then I've got a vegetable steamer that I'm going to be putting my fabric on top of once it is inside my pot. So these are all the things that we are going to be using to create our fabrics. So go gather up your flowers and I'll show you where we're going to next. Once you've gathered up your flowers, all you're going to need to do is tear them up and create this beautiful little mixture of plants that we are going to sprinkle over our fabric. In here, I've got some geraniums, I've got some rose petals, I've got some morning glories that I've cut up. Really a mixture of anything that I could find. Something else that I've got in here is some red onion skins, some yellow onion skins, those two are plants that will never fail you when it comes to dyeing. And something else that's fun to use is just a little sprinkle of turmeric because we know how intense that yellow color is. And so as you can see here, it is really just a mixture of absolutely everything that I have found in my garden and on my walks. And then I also went and got a small bunch of flowers to add in here. The more the merrier. The first thing you're going to need to do is wet your fabrics with a bit of water and vinegar solution. I'm just going to make sure that it's nice and evenly wet and then we are going to start sprinkling our flowers. So when it comes to this mixture, I'm going to be sprinkling it onto half of my fabric and then folding it over and rolling it. Once you're happy with the coverage that you've got on your fabric, it's time to fold it in half and start rolling. 
So I'm just going to fold it and give it one last spray. And then start rolling. Now that you are ready to start rolling, we are just going to put a plastic sheet, whatever kind of plastic you've got lying around, onto your fabric. That's just to stop it from transferring. But if that is something that you are interested in exploring, you can definitely skip the plastic step. Again, I have rolled my fabric onto a PVC pipe. You could use a wooden dowel. If you don't have that available, you can just roll your fabric either, as I was saying, without the plastic, or you could put the plastic in and then roll the fabric onto itself. So really, you can do whatever is available to you. Once your fabric's rolled up, you are going to then have to bind it in some way. I'm going to be using this bandage, but as I said in the beginning, you could also use some twine or whatever kind of string you have lying around. Okay, the pot is ready for us to steam our fabrics. So I'm going to put the bundles on top of my vegetable steamer and allow them to steam for 15 minutes. I will turn them at about seven or eight minutes, but you could decide that you'd like to turn them maybe three times. Maybe you don't want to turn them at all. Again, this is all part of the adventure and the experimenting and seeing what effects the different types of steaming and lengths of steaming time have on your bundles. Now that this pot has been steaming these fabrics for 15 minutes, I'm just going to turn off the heat and let it cool down for about half an hour or so, just so that it's cool enough for me to be able to unravel and allow the fabrics to dry. Coming up next is going to be the big reveal. I decided that I was going to do um, two with string one um, rolled up on itself, one rolled up on a PVC pipe and then two that are rolled up using bandage. Again one rolled up on itself and one on a PVC pipe. So I've got a bit of variety here just to see if there's any difference in the results. And I've just let them cool down for about half an hour or so and I'm quite eager to see what the results are. Oh, already I am just in love with these spots of purple against the yellow. Isn't that just gorgeous? There are still a few little 
pieces of petal on here but I'm just going to hang them out to dry and those will fall right off and then we can move on to doing something that um, we can incorporate either into our journals or use as a journal cover. So that's one of them. So again, I just love the bundle dyeing because I'm not trying to create perfect prints. I'm not trying to recreate the flowers that I've used in my dyeing process, but rather just extracting those colors to create an unexpected fabric that I could use in some other projects. I just love that there are these little blue spots in this fabric that the other one didn't have. It's amazing how even though I use the exact same mixture and the exact same fabric steamed in the same pot at the same time, each fabric has got a completely unique outcome. So here we have got our fabrics now that they've dried. I've just given them a quick iron so that they are nice and flat and ready for the final step of our adventure. And that is just working out how we're going to incorporate them into our journals. When it comes to what we can do to incorporate our fabrics into our journals, we could either do some stitching and include it in as a page in our journal, or we could create a journal cover. Really, the adventure continues. Another thing that we can do is an image transfer. So I've just created a mirror image of the quote, Embrace the Messy Middle, and I'm going to create an image transfer of this on my fabric to create a journal page that I can just stitch or pin or however I'm going to attach it into my journal. So it's going to be very easy. We're going to do a gel medium image transfer. I'm just going to try and find a piece of fabric that I think is interesting and um, then we're going to get started. I quite like this area here because it's got a lot of variety in it and so I think that this is going to be the spot where I'm going to be putting this image. So it's very easy to do an image transfer on fabric you're just going to take your acrylic gel medium and put a nice even layer of the gel medium onto the image that you would like to transfer onto your fabric. It's very important to make sure you've got the acrylic matte medium on all the surfaces that you would like to have sticking to your fabric. Where there is a gap is where you are not going to have a very clear transfer. I have found that with this aiming for imperfection often leads to a result that you are much happier with. So just go for messy and imperfect. So now that I'm sure I've got matte medium on all of my image, I'm going to turn it around and face it face down onto my fabric. And then just gently give it a rub to make sure that it's making contact everywhere with the fabric. And once that's done, I'm going to leave it outside to dry. And then we can start rubbing off this paper backing and um, see what we're left with. The acrylic matte medium has dried nicely and it's time to start rubbing this off. I do think it's important just to mention that this is a normal inkjet image. It's not a super special laser jet. Your inkjet printer is going to be just fine for this process. Once it's dry, you're just going to start adding a bit of water and rubbing and eventually you'll be able to 
rub this whole image off and you will be left with your image transfer. And there we go. Image transfer onto our bundle dyed fabric. And I'm just going to let this dry for a little bit and then I can cut it to the size that I want and stitch it into my journal. Well, that is it for this bundle dyeing adventure. I hope that you have had so much fun and that it has sparked some new and exciting inspiration and a fresh energy in your art making process. This adventure definitely opens itself up to so many possibilities. There's stitching to create a journal cover or create a fun fabric insert in your journal. You could create pockets, you could do image transfers on your fabrics. There is so much that you could do. You could even decide to just keep your fabric and use bits and pieces throughout the rest of the month. Whatever it is you decide to do with your fabrics, I hope that you have loads of fun and enjoy the rest of the messy season with all the other amazing artists that are still to follow. So thank you so much for joining me and having a spirit of adventure. I'll see you guys again soon.